Hi all, this is Professor Disha Shukla and I am conducting the subject wireless communication. My today's topic is cell sectorization. Now we have already seen what do you mean by cell splitting. So cell splitting it achieves the capacity improvement by essentially rescaling the whole system. That is we were rescaling the whole system. We were creating the small cells or splitting a particular cell into smaller ones. So we were rescaling the system by decreasing the cell, cell radius and Keeping the co-channel reuse ratio D by R unchanged, cell splitting increases the number of channels per unit area. But however, another way to increase the capacity is to keep the cell radius unchanged and seek the methods to decrease the D by R ratio that is the co-channel reuse ratio D by R. So as now we know, I mean we have seen that sectoring is something which will increase the signal to interference ratio that is SIR so that the cluster size can be reduced. Now in this approach that is in the cell sectoring first the signal to interference ratio is improved using the directional antenna and then the capacity improvement is achieved by reducing the number of cells in a cluster and thus increasing the frequency reuse. That is one way to increase the subscriber's capacity of a cellular network is to replace the omnidirectional antenna at each base station by a three sector antenna of 120 degrees or 60 degrees opening. That is we have a whole particular we have a particular cell right and it each cell that is at each base station we have an omnidirectional antenna. Now this omnidirectional antenna will transmits its uh, its uh, transmission in to all direction because it is an omnidirectional antenna but this will no, this will not i mean provide a proper coverage and all so one to increase the subscribers capacity in a cellular network it is expected or it is uh, advised to add an antenna at each base station by three sector antenna that is at each uh, at each station we need to add three uh, three sector antenna of 120 degree opening or six sector antenna of 60 degree opening each respectively now each sector can be considered as a new cell over here with its own frequency channels because now each and every antenna may it be of 120 degree opening or 60 degree opening it will be transmitting in that particular region only so the base station can either be located at the center of the original cell or at the corner of the original cell and the use of the directional sector antenna substantially reduces the interference among the co-channel cell and this will allow the denser frequency reuse. Now the factor of co-channel interference reduction also depends on the amount of sectoring used. So a cell is normally partitioned into three 120 degree sectors or six 60 degree sectors. Say for example as you can see over here we are dividing a particular cell into three 120 degree sector or six 60 degree sector like if we have a particular cell over here and we put a 120 degree opening antenna for this one another for this one and the third one for this one so actually we are creating a sector of this particular cell also we can create a particular sector using a 60 degree opening of each antenna and then we need to use we will get six particular sectors of each so the channels used in the particular cell are broken down into the sectored groups and are used only within a particular sector. Now assuming a 7 cell reuse, the one we have seen, for the case of 120 degree, the number of interference in the first tire is reduced from 6 to 2 and this is because only 2 of the 6 core channel will receive the interference with a particular sectored channel group. Now, however, in order to do this successfully, it is necessary to reduce the relative interference without decreasing the transmission power. The co-channel interference in a particular cellular system uh, may be decreased by replacing a single omnidirectional antenna at the base station by several directional antenna, each radiating within a specified sector. The co-channel interference or of a particular cellular system can be decreased if we 
if we change or if we replace a particular omnidirectional antenna with a directional antenna in each direction. Now, uh, the co-channel interference will decrease because of this and hence each radiating within a specified sector. So by using a directional antenna, a given cell with a given cell will receive the interference and transmit with only a fraction of the available co-channel cell. And the technique for decreasing the co-channel interference and thus increasing the system performance by using the directional antenna is called sectoring. Now this is what is a sectoring. Sectoring, cell sectoring is a technique of decreasing the co-channel interference. The interference that will be created because of the co-channels. So the technique of decreasing the co-channel interference and thus increasing the system performance using the directional antenna is called sectoring. The factor by which the co-channel interference is reduced depends on the amount of sectoring used. A cell is normally partitioned into three 120 degree sectors or six 60 degrees as we are already seeing here. Now, assuming the seven cell reuse for the case of 120 degree, the interference will be reduced from six to two. Moving on, consider this particular situation. The interference experienced by the mobile located in the rightmost sector in the center cell is labeled 5. That is this one, this particular cell. We are talking about this particular cell. Now, these are the co-channel cell because all of them are radiating at 5 frequency. I mean the, uh, the frequency that is used here is 5. So, there are 3 co-channel cell sectors labeled 5 to the right of the center cell and 3 to the left. Now, these 3 are located to the right, to the left of the uh, center cell the, that is this particular cell and these 3 are located to the right of this particular center cell. So, out of this 6 co-channel cells, only the 2 cell have the sectors with the antenna pattern which radiate into the center cell and hence a mobile in the center cell will experience the interference on the forward link from only these two particular sectors. Do you understand that? See here we have a channel with that is uh, center, chan uh, center cell that is labeled 5 and there are three, uh, three co-channel cells into to the right of it and the three to the left of it. Now, what happens is out of this six co-channel cells, only two cells have the sectors with the antenna pattern that will radiate into the center cell. Only two of them will be radiating in the center. So, hence a particular mobile in the center will experience the interference on the forward link from only these two sectors. Thus, the resulting signal to interference ratio for this can be calculated to be 24.2 decibels which is a significant improvement over the omnidirectional case where the worst case signal to interference ratio is 17 decibels. Say if we are using an omnidirectional antenna over here then the signal to interference ratio that we get is around 17 decibels. But if we are using the concept of cell sectoring and then if we calculate the signal to interference ratio it can be found to be 24.2 decibel. Now this signal to uh, interference improvement allows the wireless engineers to then decrease the cluster size n in order to what happens is that uh, the engineers can then decrease the cluster size n in the in uh, in order to improve the frequency reuse and thus the system capacity also increases. Now in a in a practical system. The further improvement in the signal to interference ratio is achieved by down tilting the sector antenna such that the radiating pattern in the vertical plane has a notch at the nearest co-channel distance. That is if we still want to increase the signal to interference ratio or the co-channel ratio then what happens is we do this by down tilting the particular sector antenna so that the radiating pattern in the vertical or the elevation plane has a notch at the nearest co-channel. The minimum required signal to interference ratio of 18 decibels can be easily achieved that with a 120 degree center, uh, uh, degree sectoring while with a 7 cell reuse or 12 cell reuse in the unsectored case. Thus, sectoring actually reduces the interference with the amount to an increase in the capacity by the factor of 
12 by 7 or 1.714 and in practice the reduction in the interference is offered by sectoring enabled planners to reduce the cluster size and that will provide an additional degree of freedom in assigning the channels what happens is that because of the reduction in the interference that will be offered due to the sectoring it enables the planners to reduce the cluster size planners are the where uh, the engineers that are working for creating a wireless system they will get to i mean they will be able to reduce the cluster size n and that will additionally provide a degree of freedom in assigning the channels because the number of clusters in uh, the cluster size n decreases the degree of freedom in assigning the channel also increases and hence it will be beneficial to them too so there are certain advantages and disadvantages of this particular cell sectoring so some of the advantages includes that it will be improving the signal to interference ratio it reduces the interference which increases the capacity it enables to reduce the cluster size and it provides an additional freedom in the assigning channels because it will be uh, due to sectoring obviously the signal to interference ratio is increasing it reduces the interference because the capacity increases and again the cluster size also reduces and thus the uh, channel assignment procedure will be more beneficial some of the disadvantages of this particular system is that it increases the number of antennas at each base station obviously because we are creating we are replacing one particular uh, omnidirectional antenna with either 3 120 degree opening antenna or 6 60 degree opening antenna so we are the number of antennas at each base station will be increasing it decreases in the trunk efficiency the loss of traffic traffic will be lot and the number of handoff will increase as well so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of cell sectoring so basically cell sectoring is something wherein we sector or we divide a particular cell based on the antennas i mean we replace a particular omnidirectional antenna what is an omnidirectional antenna an antenna that will be emitting in all its direction so we'll be replacing an omnidirectional antenna with a directional antenna a directional antenna is something that will be radiating in a particular direction only so by replacing an omnidirectional antenna with a directional antenna of either 120 degree centigrade uh, either 120 degree opening or 60 degree opening so this will what will happen is that the capacity or the coverage will be increased and hence the some of the advantages we get some of the advantages like improvement in the signal to interference ratio and reduction in the interference so this is all about cell sectoring if you have any questions you can ask me thank you